<laughs> now I'm getting ready to feed you the word. Amen. Can I give you the word? Yes. Amen. Listen, I have so much faith that <sighs> I just want to tell you something clean. This is going to keep it real with you. I'm not normal. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know what Mariah said? She said, we, oh, we knew that a long time ago. <laughs> Praise God. Yes. I have a lot of faith in God. Yes. The things I've seen. One time I stood on the road. I was done praying. Prayer, prayer, prayer. As I stood on the road, a car came driving crazy. I know that guy, wherever he is, he got born again. The car came driving so fast, I screamed, Jesus, he went through me. And the guy stopped the car. He said, eh, eh. And then he switched the door. He thought I was a ghost. Even me, I did this. I didn't sleep for I don't know how long. I think he gave me a little bit of a, uh, what is yeah. this, insomnia? Mm. I, I wonder, was that insomnia? Because I didn't sleep for a while. Remember I told you? The car went through me. I even called you. I said, I don't know if I'm OK. Because he went through. I saw everything inside. The guy screamed. He said, what just happened? I said, he took off. He said, oh, it's at night. There must be something here. This is some juju. Mm -hmm. Praise God. You know, in Western countries or uh, some third world countries, anything supernatural is either God or Juju. Juju is witchcraft. It's not Juju. God is real. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, so I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. Turn my unbelief. Turn my unbelief. To strong belief. To strong belief. My unbelief. My unbelief. To strong. To strong. Believe. My unbelief, my unbelief to faith. To faith. I, want to I want to see the angel of God, angel of God. Tonight. tonight. I want to encounter, want to encounter the miraculous, the miraculous. Tonight. tonight. Lord, Lord open, my eyes open my eyes to behold your glory. To behold your glory. I want to see your glory, <laughs> I to your glory. Tonight. tonight. I want to see your favor. Tonight, tonight, healing, peace, favor, grace, wisdom. I need it. I need it all. Tonight. Thank you, Lord. I shall begin to pray and thank God tonight. Talk to God now. Tell God I repent for my unbelief. Yeah, tell him. Tell him right now. Just talk to him politely. He hears you very well. Now, I'll tell you something. Overcoming fear is the sermon I'm teaching tonight. Fear is worse than cancer. Fear is a, is a spirit. Fear is a demon. You know, in the kingdom of God... There is hierarchy. Huh? There is different angels. In the angelic celestial realm, right? There is Michael, who's the chief angel, the archangel. The one who fights the battles of the children of God. Amen. Fights for Israel. Huh? Amen. Okay? He's an angel. There is Gabriel. He's a messenger angel. He declares, he announces things. When Mary was pregnant, <clears throat> when Elizabeth was pregnant, you know, Gabriel appeared a lot, even in the Old Testament, okay? He's a messenger, angel. Then there is other angels. We cannot even finish. Seraphims, cherubims, and all that. But I'll tell you something interesting tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the word. God wants you to grow. Everything you need, you cannot access it until you know what is your alliance. What are you, uh, what are you, what's your what? Alliance? Allegiance. What, what is your allegiance? What is your, am I making sense? Yes. 
What's your allegiance? It's either you're operating with energy that is not from the word of God. Oh yes, there's a lot of energy that has nothing to do with God. There's the kingdom of God and there's the kingdom of darkness. You have to choose one to survive on this earth. If you are lukewarm, you're not in or you're not out, you suffer. Because your favorite celebrity has something behind them that's making them have money. They have a lot of money. They have money like nothing because they have something behind them. They chose a side. They chose something. Praise God. Amen. And that's why they are successful. They live a very good life. Okay? They live a good life on earth. They enjoy themselves, but they can't sleep. Because where they entered, or the covenant they entered in, it has enabled them to have everything, but they don't yet, they're lacking something, sleep and rest. Okay? But in the physical realm, they have everything. Your favorite people, you watch and everything. They, they don't walk alone. They walk with things. Charm is real. I like saying it every time. Charm is real. Some folks walk with charm. You know, we were talking with a lady, and I said, uh, there are folks, you know, like in a part of Africa called uh, a certain tribe. Eh? Uh, Ni Nigeria, if you know it. And this lady actually, she's from there. A Nigerian woman. She told me, a certain tribe, like a Yoruba tribe of uh, men, uh, the majority of them, they put Jesus as a facade in their house. But the majority of them have to walk with charm. Even in the Mexican culture, in the Hispanic culture, Mexican, Southern, South America, most people put Jesus as a facade. They put him as just a mask. But behind there is an altar. That altar is a family altar. It's a traditional altar. So he, she told me that most Yoruba men, the reason why you've heard that, you know, when, whenever they get around women, you know, they're very romantic. Let's talk about relationship. No woman can greet them and resist them. It's a reality. And this thing has crossed over all the way to our America here. It is here now. It's just impartation. They walk with that. It's called touch and follow. Some of the African preachers, your favorite African preachers, you see, touch and follow. You see a church overnight blowing up. Boom! You don't see the roots, you don't see the foundation from nowhere. Everybody's sitting down listening to a person who's put everybody in a trance saying useless things, yet nobody's moving. It's a trance. It's hypnosis. There is different realms of hypnosis. Hypnosis is real, where you put somebody in a state of mind control. Do as I say. There are a lot of folks, a lot of rappers here in the United States, Compton, big time. They have altars and shrines here. In front of their house, you hear, oh, Jesus, Jesus. This is even the Bible. But behind the curtain, they have an altar. Why do they have to have this altar? Some take it all the way from Louisiana. They have to go home bring it from Louisiana and operate with it here in California. So that when they walk around the society or they move around, it's easy for them to access things. They want a job, they go. They just greet the interviewer. The moment they greet the interviewer, the interviewer employs them. Real quick with no skills. I've seen it with my eyes. I saw a man, you know, you had a dream of him, Riverside. <laughs> you had a dream of the man. This man, not qualified at all, goes from nowhere and gets a job that's $40, $40 an hour. Not, hasn't finished school, comes from overseas. He has no ethics, has nothing. He, he doesn't have the IQ, he has nothing, no experience. $40 an hour. And he says, oh, God is good, God is good. But when we prayed, prayed, prayed and fasted, we began to have dreams of what the man was into. Dark magic. So we said, well, maybe we are just dreaming, right? Till a lady from New York City, a prophet, calls. She says, prophet, the house you are in right now, leave. Whoever the, whoever the man you're staying with, God told me to tell you that's a sorcerer, it's a wizard. You guys have been given dreams, but you don't want to listen. Because you all want to be, you know, 
like maybe it's a nightmare. And some of us dream, we think it's a nightmare. Shortly I'll explain the meaning of dreams and why every dream you dream, you have to measure it. You have to calculate and see what is this I'm seeing. Because not every dream is a dream. So we got out of that place. The man was cussing the heck out of us. Laughing. Spoke words over my life. You're going out of here, you're not going to make it. But he gets a job with no qualification, no papers, $40 an hour. Even a normal American who was going to school, PhD, where would you get that? It's hard. Try. <laughs> Try. Some of you are overqualified. You've gone to school. But you see how it's hard out there. Why? Because, you know, it's either you're walking with God or you're not. And if you're walking with God, you will see his fruits. If serving him faithfully, there's going to be a backup plan for you. You see doors opening, a favor, favor from God, not strange energy. When I say energy and charm, I'm talking about a spirit. There are people who walk with spirits that you can't see in the physical, but it's a spirit, it's a person who can dress like me, but they walk with them constantly like this. You see a woman walking, she's beautiful, attractive. Or a woman who's not even beautiful. She doesn't even need to be beautiful. You see her walking like this. The moment she passes somewhere, every man turns around. And she's not beautiful. You, you look at yourself as a woman, you're pretty. But this lady is just simple. She looks very ordinary. But when she walks in and puts on her Prada, and she gets out of there, some of you have had friends like that. Every man turns around. Oh my God, oh my God. You look at the girl, there's nothing to look at. But how comes... Everybody, when they look at her, they can't stop. Their eyes are glued. They're hypnotized. Because it simply means there's a strange fire behind the lady. There's something she's carrying. There's a spirit that's invisible that calls everybody, that looks at her. It's in the eyes. Oh. Sometimes it's behind her. It's invisible to the natural. She can get anything she wants from any man. She just has to smile. Everything is given to her. <laughs> she has more than 500 men who are bowing down to her. 500. She doesn't need to work. She doesn't go and does uh, this private stuff you, you know, online to sell uh, the body. Uh uh. She just calls her. Could you send me 500? <laughs> Could you send me 1,000? <laughs> Could you send me uh, $8,000? <laughs> Could you send me to, these men I've never seen her. When they hear her voice, yes. Some of you have had friends like that. They don't have to work, but they're loaded with money. Say strange fire. Strange fire. Strange fire. Strange fire. Now listen to this. Let me teach you something. I said it's either you're on the side of light or darkness. A lot of folks are on the side of what? Darkness. And that's what the darkness is doing for them but they lack sleep. The Bible says there is no sleep for the wicked. There is no sleep for the wicked. People tell you, they tell you, oh, there's a special uh, thing I'm gonna give you. It's a special medallion. It has this, 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 or oh, it's a special ring. It's a special, let me tell you the truth. There's a lot of things that are out there that come with a consequence. Amen? Amen. Now we are talking about dreams. There's a young man in South Africa. This young man had an altercation with his dad. His father fought with him. His father kicked him out. The mother was trying to protect. No, leave my son. The father said, no, he's lazy. Get out. So the boy was desperate. He said, I got to make money. At night, the boy was sleeping. He had a dream of a man who came and was proposing to him what to do. The man was talking to him and was telling him, hey, what's up? Um, come, join us. He even saw himself signing a contract in the dream. And he was eating flesh, like almost human flesh, blood. He said he does not know what made him do that in the dream, but he had the appetite to do that. And suddenly, towards the end of the dream, he saw his mother dead and his father dead. And when he woke up, he ran quickly, okay? in the father's and mother's room. 
to just knock because of just a nightmare. It looked so real, like yeah, as if he had done it with his hands. They gave him a sheet and the picture of the father was there, the picture of the mother was there, and he's, he, they died. After he stabbed, he physically died. He saw them dying. Blood was coming out. When he ran, he found out Papa and Mama is alive. <sighs> he was shocked. Guess what? One by one, the mom died. The second, the dad died. They all died. And guess what? After they all died, he started having a lot of money. He had money like crazy. Money. People were just offering him money. He saw strange people. He would meet strange people. They're like, you want this business? They would propose for him anything he needed. Anything he needed, he could get. Without even him asking, he had a lot of money. Every time he looks at his account, money. Guess what? He was initiated in a dream. You don't need to go somewhere physically in a shrine. A dream is real. As I could touch you like this. See the way I'm touching you? A dream is real like this. Who has ever dreamed like a cat or something scratched your leg, you woke up? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever dreamt? Have you ever dreamt? Thank you. Have you ever dreamt something scratched you? Mm. Or somebody hit you or somebody pushed you? Mm. Huh? And when you woke up, did you feel a sensation? Yeah. Of the exact spot? Mm -hmm. What is that? <laughs> Who has experienced that? Somebody scratching you and you wake up, you look at the same hand, you're like, whoa. Mm. You know that's real. That's your spirit, uh-huh. Sorry, I had a dream, like, a, I think last month. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like, it was kind of ominous feeling, but I went in there, like, strong. Mm -hmm. And, like, I was like, I was like, whatever it is, like, it's not of God. So I prayed, I prayed on it, and then, like, it's like a bad force, like, lifted me up. And then I was like, oh, no, 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 no. And I put myself back down, and then, like, when I woke up, it felt like I was screaming, because I was screaming, like, in the name of Jesus. Like, yeah, because, because you know what's happening? Something was trying to pull your soul. And that's how people, you, you dream like you're in a car accident. I know people who said, man, people, I know people who dreamt of their accident and death. Who has ever seen people like that? They kept on dreaming they're going to die and they died. They even dreamt of their funeral. You can dream of your funeral, you see yourself like this. Or if you dream of a relative who died, it simply means there's a familiar spirit of death calling you. And if you're not careful and you don't pray, an accident, something can happen to you and you die. It's called untimely death. Your time was not yet done. So you left the earth, you exited this physical realm before your time. And do you know how many folks you guys have who died before the numbers of days God had put for them on earth? Some of you got friends, boyfriends, people you knew you grew up in school with. They died. Their life was cut short, it was sacrifice. A lot of death you see in LA of some celebrities, like Nipsey Hussle was a blood sacrifice. You know, they have to sacrifice stars. If it's not a star, someone in the family just dying. From nowhere they were healthy, they didn't wake up. There's nothing like a mistake. Their soul was removed out of their body because the occult world has to operate and function with blood. Praise God. Some of the gangs you see, bloods, crips, all these gangs. Do you know blood, the blood and the crypts? Do you know what the color blue and red represents? It's an occultic color. Blue and red is occultic, it's occultic color. Big time. The bloods, the crypts you see there, those are, those are big, those are not just gangs. They do a lot of blood sacrifice. There's a lot of politicians who are in bloods and crypts. I'm telling you, they're backed up with the politicians. The police force you see here in America, the police force is a very big cult. They have to shed blood every time. Whether you're Latino, you're white, you're black, you hear stories of someone getting shot. It's not about even race anymore. It's a, every end of the year. Watch carefully. How I knew it was a cult, the police force was a cult, is when <laughs> one night I was driving from the prayer from Santa Monica. I'm driving, I'm entering in the valley like this, Immediately I see a cop, a cop behind me. From nowhere, freeze, put your hands up. I said, it's midnight, I came from prayer. Put your hands up, freeze, drawing the guns. This other one jumped already open this other door. This one jumped, I said, ah, I feel strange. 
And I heard the Holy Spirit whisper to me and say, they want you to exit the world. It's a setup. The damage you're doing by praying in the spirit world, you are affecting the environment where you are. Because every time you say the name of Jesus, they shake. You are affecting their operation. By you living in the valley, there's an operation you are affecting. So they have timed you to take you out because in the spirit world, they know you. Some of you think, you think these cops just have psychology. They are, these cops are psychics, some of them. You see a cop looks at you and say, hey, how are you? Knows everything about you. Did not go to the, to the car and check you out. They say, hey, what's up? You okay? You know, most of them are psychics, high level psychic who are into wizardry. And they're wizards. They're in the blue uniform. They're hunting for blood. They have to make sure in the police department. Oh, tonight I want us to pray. Amen. Some of you have had loved ones. Yeah. Yeah? Like I heard a story, uh, your cousin who's in prison in LA County. Is it your cousin? Give me his name. Mm. Marvin is sacrificed. That's a blood sacrifice. Now, blood sacrifice doesn't necessarily mean someone is, uh, you die. Even if you have somebody incarcerated in prison, it's a setup. They took his star. So there's a need of a prayer. He, says, eh? he was set up too. He was set up. Yeah. So, so his life, someone is living the life of Marvin. So in the world of witchcraft, what they do, some of the people you see locked up, they exchange their life. They give them up as an offering to the LA County prison in the occultic world. So the police have to do that occultic mission. Most of these people you see in jail, it's not like they killed. Some of them are doing time because it's a sacrifice. Their life was exchanged and put in prison. Oh, you have an uncle maybe who's an immigrant who's in prison. You wonder like why are they in prison all those years? It's because someone has replaced their life. That's what witchcraft they do. Yeah, somebody's in the occult and as in the occult, they want to graduate a police, whatever. They have to take an innocent person, set them up with a gun set them up even with weed. They go as far as do that. And then they exchange their life and they give someone else. And you see suddenly a, a successful lawyer in LA, wow. known everywhere. Not knowing this lawyer had to give out like 20 prisoners who were in prison doing life for him to be free. So the world of witchcraft is what? Steal, kill, and? Destroy. Jesus said Satan came to kill, steal, and? Destroy. But I came to give? Life, life in abundance. Praise God. Amen. I don't even know why the Lord is leading me to talk about this tonight. But I want to share something with you. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. The truth shall set you free. You're going to be free and you'll know how to pray. So the cops pull up on me in the valley. One opens this door. How can you do? You're already far. The light, pa, I can't even see. This other one has already jumped here. Pa, 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 with a gun. Freeze! Why are you saying freeze? Who have I killed? The Lord told me, don't put your hands out. Keep them on the dashboard. As I kept my hands on the dashboard, I heard a small, still voice of God telling me, eh, 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 it is a setup to take you out. In the satanic calendar, they have a calendar whereby they have to destroy or kill a number of people. So in the satanic calendar, in the occultic world where they meet and gather, on that date they said, this star has to fall, meaning me. So when you tell someone freeze, freeze is dangerous. You've done something wrong, felony, a thug, someone who's just killed, the suspect. When I put my hands, I heard the Lord telling me you're not going to die. Call my name. I said, Jesus, 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 I thank you. I thank you because you love me. The guy, I pulled on whatever is already doing this. This other one has already opened the door. First of all, that's even wrong to open the door. According to the law, I just sat there. This has nothing to do with race. It has everything to do with setup. So the guy who's drawing his gun like this, he draws it back. They're confused. They're like, oh, I don't know what they're saying. And looks at me like this. 
He walks around like this. Walks around like this. <laughs> I'm smiling. Why? Because there are angels that are confusing them. Maybe even the angels came with the same uniform they're wearing. So they're seeing people in the same uniform as them. Confusing them. Telling them it's not a suspect. Bible says I'll cause confusion yeah. to your enemies. Yeah. <laughs> so they said, they said, you're drinking alcohol? I said, no. They said, who are you? I was like, what do you want me to say, prophet? I just said, um, I'm a man of God. God is good. And I looked at the guy like this. And I looked at the other one like this. Their guns are drawn out. I said, okay, let's see. And they put back their guns, say, all right, okay, just uh, put your lights. They tried to find something on and uh, just stay safe out here. And they bounced. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew. And then as I drove and I arrived home, God told me, you are set up. Not once, not twice. Do you understand? It's not a racial thing. It's a spiritual thing. Do you, do you understand what I mean? It's a cult. It's a spiritual thing. And these things are happening every day. There are folks who are in prison. Those are fallen stars. They're dead. They're literally, they're, they have killed what we call living. They're not living anymore. It's good as dead. It's better you just buried than doing life for nothing. A guy got released at the age of 80. 78, when they discovered that he had not committed a crime. And then he comes out, he's learning how to talk. He's looking at the buses, he's shocked. Technology. <laughs> Guess what? In the occultic world, if you read the book of Ezekiel, it says, it, it talks about witches hunting people who preserve their lives while they capture my people and put them as birds in a cage. The book of Ezekiel. They hunt. They're called soul hunters. They exchange life. That's witchcraft. Some of you could be having your life, you're living it like this, but you're not living it to the fullest. Because your life is exchanged to be a life of trauma. You can have money, you don't enjoy it. You have your kids, you have your family, nothing. You might think, well, if I have a new car, I'll enjoy No. You might say, if I get married, I'll enjoy No, until you leave your purpose. Sometimes God cannot bring what needs to come in your life until you find your purpose? Why do I talk about finding? Because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. To steal what? Purpose? Destiny? To mess up your future. Praise God. Can I tell you how the enemy can mess up somebody? A girl comes to my meeting called Mercy. During prophetic moments, I'm praying. Praying, praying. And I turn to this girl, I say, what's your name? She says, Mercy. I say, Mercy, I need to pray for you. She said, okay. She stood and put her hand on her waistline. She said, because her mom had brought her. And I said, are you okay? She said, attitude. I said, Mercy, I see a guy in your life. This guy will impregnate you. You're not ready for the baby. You're only 19. She looked at her mom, thought her mom told me her age. Prophetically, I was able to see her age. If you get this baby, you'll suffer a lot, Marcy. You're a bright student. You have to continue your college. You'll be a very effective lawyer and successful and you'll help a lot of people but you have to listen to, to my instructions. The guy you are with is messing with you. He'll put a baby on deep. She said, went and told her mom, never take me there again. Screamed at her mom. See, I don't like stuff like that. People who act spiritual, and everything, he thinks he knows me, doesn't know me, F, F, uh. Guess what? <laughs> Literally, after one year, the mom reaches out to me. She's crying. I'm asking her, why are you crying? She told me, Mercy gave birth. We didn't tell you. She gave birth. This is after one year. But the child she gave birth to is a boy. The problem is not the child. The problem is every time, because she gave birth through, um, not C-section, natural birth. She teared so bad. 
listen to this. She teared so bad, right? That the hospital where she was rushed, it was the closest hospital. The doctor was supposed to knit her together, use something infected, confused. And so that girl is like rotting. So they call me to say, it cannot heal. We are scared of cancer. For three months, it's not healing. It keeps removing pus. The child is okay. This girl suffered, suffered. They keep knitting it. They keep putting antibiotics. It's open like this. Because where she went, I don't know if it was an explosion, the way the kid came out, the child. It didn't stop. They keep knitting it. It doesn't want to close. I told her. You're supposed to be what? A lawyer. She was stubborn because she thinks like spiritual things are for spiritual people. Let me live my life. No, you're not living your life. You're cutting your life short like this. So guess who's the lawyer? Somebody is a lawyer because the man who came in alive was not just a man. It was a spirit of witchcraft that pushed that man to target a destiny that is powerful like that. So the man was pushed to dim her light. And her light was completely gone. When I saw her the next time, after no one year and a half now, <laughs> that girl was only what, 21, 20? She looked very, now she was 20, she looked very old. Very old, I didn't believe, I could not, I could hardly recognize her. We're in a meeting now, she's praying. I'm like, who is this? Old. Very old, I say, ah, too many wrinkles. I say, this, this was the beautiful girl. Someone took her destiny. The man who came in her life came to rob who she is. You got to be very careful. There are people who come with a strange light to rob who you are, to take who you are, to take your personality, to take your calling away from you. Praise God. I don't know why I was led by the spirit to share this. But it came so strong in my life. The Lord is saying, find your purpose. Tonight, you need to find your purpose. Fear is not going to help you. Are you ready to find your purpose? Amen. Are you ready to find your purpose? Amen. Tonight, the Lord is saying, find your purpose. Find your provision. Find your blessings. Find the connections. Find the people that are supposed to be there as divine helpers. Find your soul. Amen. Find yourself. Amen. If you can't find yourself, it's very difficult for God to bless you. You have to know who you are. Before God blesses a person, he has to reveal their calling. Amen. And you have to maintain your calling. Sometimes we say, God said this in my life, but you're not walking in your calling. Praise God. When God calls you to do something, he's not confused. He has called you to do it. It's a matter of having faith. Be careful that you don't sell your birthright to your mother, yes. to your father. Amen. You can sell your birthright. He's lived his life. Yep. Selling your birthright is, he becomes a priority in your life. You're sold out. The Bible says, whoever loves me, forsake your mother, father, for my name's sake. This is Jesus, not me. <laughs> Who is this that's in front of you that you have, not, you have sold out your birthright to? When mommy calls, you jump around. It's like you lose who you are. You forget. Not knowing mommy is here on earth for a season. Daddy is here on earth for a season. But you have an eternal life to preserve. Amen. Who are you? That's the question I have for you. Who are you? Find yourself tonight. Ask yourself, who is this that has taken over? Because you can raise somebody as an idol in your life without knowing. Is food your idol? There could be something in your life that's an idol. Is it food? Some of you, if you don't eat, you can't function. You're angry. You are upset. You give bad looks. You, you make bad decisions. Some of you, if you eat, you become very nice. Very friendly. You smile, you dance, you turn around. You know, you're nice. You're very nice. You're very, you talk good. Praise God. So it must mean food is your idol. What is this you're idolizing? 
The Lord is saying, overcome fear tonight. Uh, overcome fear, Leo. Overcome fear. Amen. Overcome fear, for it's not the will of God for you to have fear like this. <laughs> overcome fear tonight. Amen. Are you ready to overcome fear? Amen. Amen. Yeah, because I sense a lot of fear tonight. Fear of being alone, fear of being rejected, fear of being insulted, fear of being abused. What is this fear you're carrying in your life? Whatever fear it is, let God set you free from it. I want us to pray. I want us to rise up and pray. God, God is telling me something. Let's pray. Father, Lord, I want to thank you for this wonderful time. Your name is above every obstacle. We command the spirit of heaviness to lift up. I thank you for what you're doing tonight. We command heaviness and witchcraft to break. We command pain to leave our bodies. We command the spirit of accusation to break. Uh, now, as I'm as re re putting my hands out, I speak healing. I speak healing tonight. Is there anybody who has pain in your body? I need to pray for healing. Praise God. 